Hello, my name is Gergely Tokac. My co-authors and I have prepared a presentation of our paper titled An Early Hardware Prototype of a Miniature, Low-Cost, Flexible Link Experiment. The field in which control engineering and mechatronics meets the world of mechanical vibration is vibration control. Today's robots, especially robotic arms, are getting lighter and they are moving faster. Of course, this causes vibration effects that have to be compensated for. If we would like to teach students about these vibration effects and their compensation, we can use laboratory tools. One of the popular ways to teach this in the laboratory is called a flexible link device or a rotational flexible link. In this device, we have a motor, for example, a servo motor, which can turn a link, which in turn moves in two directions along its uh, axis, and of course may vibrate as well. If one would like to use a rotary flexible link device to teach concepts of vibration control to engineering students, one may buy a commercial instrument. These are laboratory devices, precise, well-made, well-documented, and of course come with course materials. On the other hand, they are fragile, fairly large, and very expensive. Numerous institutions simply cannot afford to equip a laboratory with such devices. And of course, students can just take them home for homework and other assignments. An alternate route to equipping a teaching or research laboratory by a flexible link device is making one yourself. Numerous authors in the open literature have chosen to make their own flexible link device for teaching or even for research. These do-it-yourself projects are usually low cost, but they are not well documented. So instructors, teachers and researchers across universities cannot replicate the results. And of course, they are one off devices that stay local to a certain research group or laboratory. Is there a middle ground in creating hardware for teaching? Is there something between proprietary and between self-made? We can turn to the well-known Arduino microcontroller prototyping boards for inspiration. These devices are cheap, they are open source and easy to buy, and effectively they are standardized. They come with a free integrated development environment, and have a great community and abundance of learning materials for students. Most importantly, the hardware can be expanded by the so-called system of shields. Shields are essentially printed circuit boards that can be pushed onto the microcontroller prototyping board, thereby expanding its functionality, for example, controlling motors or connecting to the internet. My colleagues and I have created an open initiative called Automation Shield that is meant to create novel tools for control engineering and mechatronics education. We are trying to implement laboratory experiments that fit onto a single Arduino expansion shield, thereby essentially creating tiny control or mechatronics laboratories that fit in the palm of your hand. Similar to the Arduino initiative itself, these shall be cheap, open source, possible to build at home even by beginners, fairly well standardized, then coming with a free software library that is compatible to the Arduino IDE. In this paper, we are presenting an early prototype of an open source, miniature and low cost flexible link device. We call it the Link Shield. The link shield consists of a printed circuit board. This PCB holds a servo motor to which we connect a 3D printed hub. The hub holds a small cantilever beam that can move along with the motor, emulating a flexible link robot. After a fast position change, the end of the beam will vibrate, and this vibration is picked up 
by an acceleration sensor mounted to its end and of course fed back to the Arduino. As I have mentioned earlier, every device within the Automation Shield initiative is open source. This means that anyone can download the electronic schematic files for the Link Shield, along with the printed circuit board layouts. These layouts can be sent to overseas manufacturers and can be made ready to order in a couple of days for very little money and then can be hand soldered to create a final finished device. Those wishing to build a link shield device by themselves can find a comprehensive bill of materials on our website and of course in the paper. This bill of materials adds up to a material price of just under 22 euros. All the components can be easily bought and sourced anywhere in the world. The price excludes consumables, labor and the Arduino board. In addition to the open source Link Shield hardware, we are also offering an API or application programming interface, which has been written in C, C++ for the Arduino ID. This open source API is a part of a larger package called the Automation Shield Library, which can be downloaded from our website automationshield.org. The API for the Link Shield device and for the other devices is meant to abstract the inner workings of the experimental hardware from the control algorithm, thereby speeding up development of control applications. So, for example, students or researchers may initialize the Link Shield device by calling the begin method from the Link Shield object. To calibrate the gravity offset or bias, one may call the calibration method. To read the acceleration at the end of the moving beam, one just reads and uses the sensor read method to send a certain angle to the servo motor, to the actuator, one just uses the actuator write method and to read the reference from the onboard potentiometer, the user calls the reference read method. Besides the API, we have also included demonstration examples. In this demonstration example written in the Arduino IDE, the student just calls a header that implements all the functionalities of the link shield. For discrete sampling, the student can also use our framework that is included in the Automation Shield library. Later then, in their own application, the user just calls the sensor read method for feedback readings creates some sort of control algorithm. In this case, this is a version of the positive position feedback algorithm, and then sends the decision variable to the actuator by the actuator write method. Experimental results for this demonstration example are shown in the figure. The blue line denotes the vibration of the end of the beam after a movement to a certain position. The orange line denotes the movement of the beam to, the, to, to this position by using version of the positive position feedback algorithm. As you can see, this response dies down uh, to its equilibrium much faster than the one without control. To conclude this presentation, our paper demonstrates a flexible link device for teaching mechatronics and control. The device is completely open source, it is low cost and well documented. The hardware comes with an API for the Arduino IDE, including some examples. In the future, work shall continue on the link shell device, namely to create a better hardware by adding an IMU, and reading the servo position signal. We are planning to implement more API, for example, for MATLAB, Simulink, or in CircuitPython. 
We're also planning to create better models and identification examples. And of course, the range of demonstration examples can be also expanded by linear quadratic or model predictive controllers. If you have found this device interesting, make sure to visit our website at automationshield.org. There you can find several other designs for devices implementing magnetic levitation, balancing a ball in a tube, floating a ball, thermodynamic experiments, motor experiments, and optical experiments. That is all for today. Thank you very much for your attention and for watching this video. If you have any questions about the presentation or the paper, you may write me an email at any time, or you can contact me on my social media profiles. Bye-bye.